premiums were on the rise well before mm -hmm. this reform talk came to the forefront. Beyond the potential increases from the existing reform package, what are some of the drivers behind the increases in general? The primary driver behind the increase in rates is actually medical inflation. That is the cost of care. Hospital chains, pharmaceutical companies and the like, they drive the cost of care. Of note, and not to shift blame, but the largest hospital chain in the United States had a 24% profit margin last year. Forget admin costs and the like, pure profit. I liken the passage of the Health Care Reform Act, which frankly needed to happen. This needs to get fixed. Uh, I'm not sure that this was the effective first step we were hoping for, but there was not anything in the act that addressed the cost of health care and the inflation. With that said, I liken the act and its passage to changing the rules on a checking account, how checks are processed, how much the bank can charge to process checks and the like, but it didn't change the cash flow that goes through it. There was nothing there addressing it. So if, if the majority of the increases before the Health Care Reform Act changes came from the cost of care and its inflation, I don't expect any change. How can businesses offset some of the expense associated with the cost of care inflation? Somewhat the million dollar question. There are a number of different ways to, to go after this. One would be uh, product design what plans you have in place for the employees, the staff that you have. Another would be, depending on how large an employer group you are, in instituting a wellness program, something that uh, addresses the health of the employee so that over a longer term you'd see a return on that investment over three years or longer. And the other thing would be to incorporate within the product designs more of a health savings account type environment where it's not just an insurance vehicle but a financial vehicle that helps finance their health care expenses. So to speak to wellness programs particularly, and this really only works in a larger group in my opinion, a larger employer group, but by instituting weight loss programs, smoking cessation programs, general mental health and fitness within an employer group, it does a number of things. It certainly gives the employee a sense of wholeness and that the employer is engaged with them and cares more than just what they produce for the company. It does feel intrusive when you start talking about weight loss with employees and everyone starts looking around at each other in, in employee meetings and the like. But the reality is there that um, the utilization of health care, the cost of that, is driven by a huge percentage by lifestyle choices, eating choices, smoking choices, drinking choices. And if there's at least an awareness of that, and it's a corporate-wide awareness, it will help drive costs down over time. I don't expect any sort of return on that type of investment in the first year. Usually it's three years or longer, but instituting those types of programs will impact a larger group's claims history and help curtail some of that cost. Product in innovation, that's gonna come industry-wise. You're gonna see a, a lot in the way of innovative product designs. Now, in the last five or six years in the United States, probably the primary product that has come out are health savings account, consumer-centric accounts, where, quite frankly, the insurance looks a little more catastrophic. There are higher deductibles. Typically, wellness or, or preventive care is paid in full, but then there's a larger exposure for all other services. Having that type of insurance drive down the premium, of course, because it's more catastrophic, but paired with it is a financial tool, a health savings account, that allows both the employer and the employee to fund funds pre-tax that they can spend towards their health care expenses. So uh, the advantage there is that a health savings account is not a use it or lose it flexible account. It can build up over time if it's not utilized, but it allows the utilization to be tax-free, uh, which is a, a big, big deal. Even in a blue-collar paycheck-to-paycheck environment over the course of a year, it's always going to be the case that it's a better deal. Now, that's by no means a silver bullet product. It's not going to save the industry, but it is one that certainly from a cost point perspective has helped a lot. The other innovations we've seen in the product are plans that carve out particular coverages. And I know that sounds bad, but one that is fairly successful, at least in my part of the country, are generic only pharmacy cards on health insurance plans. 85% or more of drugs have generic equivalents at this time. So what these insurance plans do, they look like a traditional plan, but because they only cover generic drugs, they're often 10% or more cheaper than a like plan that would. 
cover a brand name drug. So little innovations like that, certainly a red flag to be concerned with. You, you know, the, the employee needs to be aware of this, of course. And typically, any type of this plan or innovative product like this doesn't necessarily belong as a standalone product. It's nice to have a menu of options for your employees, if possible, and then allow them to make some choices as far as what risk they want to take on. Are employers unaware that they can provide a menu of options to employees? Often that's the case. They're not aware or the representation that's working with them isn't putting the full menu in front of them. Now, that said, different insurance companies have different products, and it does depend on your size as an employer also. For example, if you have less than five full-time employees, that's probably not an option for you to have a menu. Here in Colorado, though, there are two carriers that will allow multiple plan options in group sizes that size. Over five or over ten employees, you can typically see a menu type environment. Now, in that type of setup, typically what we see is that the employer will share a certain percentage of the cost of the plan, regardless of the employee's choice of plans. So it's, so it's up to the employer to choose which plans they're comfortable funding. And, and that's a, a good discussion to have and one that I think is appropriate to be transparent with the employees. I think they need to know what the true cost of all this stuff is. It's amazing to me when an employee leaves a company, when they see the cost of COBRA insurance, they say, oh my gosh, it's so expensive. Well, yes it is, but that's what your employer's been paying this whole time. So I think it actually behooves the, the employer to show the employee while they're working there what kind of value they are by how much they're paying for their coverage. Now, showing them the whole thing, I think, is an important thing.